What, what I want to tell people right now, first and foremost, is do not underestimate the effects of life that have on your children. Do not discount it, and especially in grief. It's uh, already a hard thing for people to deal with as adults. It's even harder for children, so reach out. I want the people to know how it feels to be a kid with a mom dog. Rolly Ramey is the backbone of the centre. The centre was started in memory of his two daughters um, who were killed in a car crash outside of Horseshoe Valley in January of 1995. The centre opened its doors in December of 1995 and Rolly has been instrumental in um, really in keeping the, the centre going. My wife and I were spared the misfortune of dying but had the unfortunate part of having to deal with the loss of our two daughters. There are so many sport for adults. People say, okay, they've got it, they need this, oh my gosh, how can you imagine they've been through such and stuff, stuff like that. For children, it's, well, you know, you're just a child, you really don't understand it and all the rest. But they're caught up in that same emotional baggage, it's, and maybe even more so because they don't have those life skills. And so, the center is that support mechanism. If I was confused and I have some life skills and some experiences, can you imagine how much more confused a child might be? And then the people that are closest to them and are grieving probably don't even know how to help them out. <laughs> I met Anne in Denmark uh, when I finished university. Uh, I was on a student exchange program and met her at a house party one night. She died at 18 years marriage. She was diagnosed three years prior. Anne and I sought some uh, counseling at the time on how to deal with the situation with the girls. And the answer was very clear. Don't hide anything. Be upfront with them. Tell them everything within reason. The animal that reminds me of my mom is a Great Dane because she was great and she's Danish. <laughs> I've been coming to season one and a half years. When I first came, I was nervous. And then when we started to come to grieving, I got used to it. and. I started feeling better. The biggest challenge, you know, two young girls in their formative years having lost uh, their mother, who's female role model, by far the biggest influence on them in their life. So there was a huge void. And as hard as I can try to do all the things that Anne did for them, you know, I'm always going to fall short of, I, I can't be that female role model. She would be happy that we moved on still remembering her, but now we're still happy instead of sad all the time. She would be very proud because it's the right thing to do for my kids, you know. She would want my kids to be happy as quickly as they could be, and this center helps with that. She was like always in a good mood around us, and I loved her. The two boys, Heldon and Dacian, they are half-brothers. Heldon's baby brother died at 15 days old, and one month before that, Dacian's mother died. So this family has, all around, had a lot of loss. So there's, there's been, you know, the parents have lost a baby, um, the boys have lost 
a sibling and the one boy, Dacian, has lost his biological mother as well. I myself find it a very tricky situation because I'm, I'm a pretty sensitive guy myself, especially when it comes to matters of the heart. So sometimes when they want to talk about like what happened with Riker or in Dacian's case, what happened with his mother, I find it hard because I get choked up. And when I get choked up, I tend to close my doors. So, you know what I mean? Their experience with the Season Center has helped them to open up, but it's also helped me to kind of be able to talk about it a lot more with them. And, you know what I mean? I met a lot of parents there that, that went through what I went through. And then you hear how they deal with it, and it kind of gives you an idea. Well, when I go home, I'm going to try what they said, because what I was doing obviously wasn't working. When I'm at school, I feel sad. I feel sad because he's not there anymore. I feel sad because... He, he never got a chance to be in junior kindergarten. Alden's definitely terrified, without a doubt about, without a doubt about uh, our new baby being, uh, joining our family. He's scared he saw something that a lot of kids don't see in their lives. He watched his little brother, Riker, pass away right before his eyes. So ever since that moment, my, my little son, Alden, has been overprotective and very like a big brother, you know what I mean? I'm going to protect him and nothing will happen to him. This girl, um, she, she had a new baby brother, um, and um, I said, you're lucky. And then she's like, yeah, your brother's dead. <laughs> Starts laughing about it. We have found that a lot of these children do get teased and, and bullied because of the fact that they have had somebody in their family die. Um, when they come to the group, so that's, that's another common thing that they share. And again, they're supported, they, they give each other support, and it's, it's wonderful to see. And they know that they're not alone. When Dacian first came here, he wouldn't talk to me at all about what happened with his mother. Within a couple weeks of seeing Shelley and talking about it with a stranger that he knew it wouldn't leave the room, he's opened right up to, to me about how things were when he was with his mother and how, him, how his mother and her husband got along and all the great things he remembers about her, all the sad times he remembers with her. So to get him to just initially open up was almost impossible. I do feel like the season center is going to help me because sometimes it, um, it, it helps me get my mind off it because when we um, do something fun, it will make me get my mind off it and get it to the games. My name is Luke and I come here because my dad, I, my dad died of a spontaneous brain bleed, and my sister came out too late. <laughs> my name is Alex, and my dad died of leukemia, which is a type of cancer. The one thing about the season center that I really, really liked the most is um, probably just being around kids who's, who've lost their dads. Because our groups tend to be combined with, you know, an individual who, for whom the loss might have been fairly recent and someone who may be a little further along their path. Um, you know, that's the one of the other real values of peer support because the person who's been there and walked through it and thought about it um, can then say, well, here's where I was at. The way the season center helps you is um, it lets you grieve it makes you, makes you less angry. Oh, Lily, where's my lilies? Oh, there she is. Woo! Tyrone started here almost two years ago. His uh, two-month-old brother um, died by SIDS in um, just just less than two years ago. So Tyrone started group here, and um, he's he's still in group at this point. It hit Tyrone really hard. Um, he's really close to his brothers. He loves them. He would do absolutely anything for them. He's a really compassionate kid, and he just absolutely tortured him. Mom, this sand's cooler. Like right here. What we have seen with a lot of our, our kids that have had a baby sibling die, you know, a, a, a baby or a very young child, we see um, when mom gets pregnant again, they have a lot of anxiety and a lot of fear 
that this new baby is also going to die. That relates into having trouble at school. They can't focus, they can't concentrate, their behavior gets a little more out of control. You can try to reassure them, but these kids have, um, they know that anything can happen. It made me feel sad and emotional, worried. My brothers, because my brothers and my family, because I thought they would die too. So I um, tried to take care of them. My father died when I was six years old, and there wasn't any group for, for me to go to when I was that age. It was all one-on-one -on -one counseling, and uh, it wasn't really that effective. So it's, uh, it's great that Tyrone and all the other kids that have to, something to relate to like that, they have something to uh, a group setting where they, they know they're not alone. Dear Teddy, I really miss you. Please ask God if you can come back when you are 18. The thing I like most about Sydney Center is talking to other people who feel this, who had the same problem as you. I love Teddy so much, I could. It gives you the same feeling as much as you can love your children is as much as it can absolutely hurt when you lose one. It's still tough because, well, you know how after people die and you don't get to see them very often. Don't get to see them at all. Not one little bit. When children grieve, they tend to grieve more physically than what adults do. Um, and so that's why we have the many rooms that we have upstairs, like the volcano room, the games room, the splat room where they get to throw paint against the wall. Um, and now those rooms are to encourage them to be able to let them out in a physical way, but a socially acceptable way. Grieving children have a lot of energy because they're really usually really mad. And so they're really mad, so they just want to kind of blow off all their energy. There's Rachel on the side. My name's Drew Morley. I'm 17 years old. My best friend Rachel died by suicide in 2009. We spent most of the time together, like 24/7, even during school. Um, like she was here all the time. And if, I, like, if she wasn't, like, if we weren't, like, if we weren't here, we were at her house. Are you and Rachel screaming? It's an interesting complication of of uh, a death by suicide. Because how do you continue to love that person while their actions have shattered your life? Shattered, for most survivors, every core fundamental element of relationship has been shifted. Um, I'm thankful for Nancy. And um, I'm thankful for her family and friends. Um, because without them, like, I probably wouldn't have gotten this far. The group that Drew's been in is quite quite cohesive. We actually had uh, 11 teens this year in our survivor group and had some other teens um, in some different groups because there wasn't sufficient space. Like sometimes you can have friends that you can't confide yourself in and other times you can. And I find that like the trustworthy friends are the ones that you can confide yourself in and you can trust them with like things that are going on and they help you get through certain times. Before I went to season center I was I didn't have any coping methods, like I didn't know how to deal with things and like it's been like somewhat, not like a rehab, but it's been somewhat of like a, like a journey. Sometimes it's something that your kids don't want to talk to you about, but they feel comfortable talking to somebody else about. And they have the group support, they have just somebody else that they can talk to. If the season center wasn't there to help, I'd probably be one of the pictures on the wall. I was talking the other day, um, the boys and I were out shopping and we were looking for couches and I bought this couch but we were looking at these chairs as well to potentially bring home a chair and um, 
they had some really cool ones that the boys thought would be really neat. And one of the questions that they asked me that day was, Mom, I wonder what kind of chair Daddy would have in heaven and whether he would have this fancy chair or whether it would be a Maple Leafs chair or whatever, because that was his favorite team. So I found it very helpful just to be around people in the same situation, just to talk and get it off your chest. And, so then and also learn and some tricks, perhaps, um, of what, what they would do. You know, me being a single dad, not knowing where to buy clothes for my girls. Simple, practical things like that were, were helpful to learn from the others. Brayton was, uh, Brayton is my only child. Um, extremely, extremely close. Very emotional, sensitive boy. Um, we grew up with our, what we called our Wednesday night movie dates, where the two of us would get together and get our jammies on and cuddle up on the couch and pick a movie and that um, was a standing thing that was very important to Brayton and I loved it. I could picture it right now. He, he's just below me where his head's just under my nose and I can see myself smelling his hair. March 9th, 2006, we had got a phone call from Brayton's dad's um, now wife to get to the hospital. There had been an accident. We had jumped in the car, me and Steve, my spouse. We had jumped on the 400 and your first instinct is to go extremely fast. You don't, you don't know what's happened. But ultimately I didn't put, um, I mean, I was scared, but I never expected to walk into what I walked into, not in a million years. Steve had dropped me off at the front door of the RVH and there was a lady waiting there for me and she asked me if my name was Tammy Bullock. And I think it was then when I started to realize something serious had happened, like why were they at the front door waiting for me? She had escorted me through some double doors and into a room that said quiet room. And in there was Brayton's dad, um, Brayton's dad's now wife, Teresa, and an OPP officer. And I think it was the police officer that really threw me. I'm like, well, why is there a police officer in the room? Like, what's happened? And I turned to the police officer and I said, where's my son? Where's Brayton? Like, why are we here and why can't I take, you know, nobody take me to him? The police officer said, I'm sure somebody will be in very shortly. I was just the one that escorted the ambulance to the hospital. That was it for me. I, I, I knew something was really wrong when my son needed to be escorted to the hospital. I don't know what the gap in time was when the doctor had finally come in and said that uh, Brayton was brought in with trauma to his chest. And I said, well, what kind of trauma? And he said that he had been stabbed. And I said, well, what can we do? Do you need anything? Does he need blood? What, what can we do? You know, take me to him. I want to go see him. And uh, the doctor said, you know, we've done all we can do. And I said, well, great. You know, then, you know, I, I want to go see him. Take me to him. He said, I don't think you understand. We've done all we can do. We, we've lost him. And they said that uh, they're getting the room ready right now for you to see him. And I just couldn't grasp that concept of getting the room ready. Like, I don't, what was I going to walk into? His funeral was the biggest thing for me to make sure that I had did everything exactly like Brayton would have deserved and what I think Brayton would have wanted. Tammy definitely came to the center, supporting her um, stepdaughter at the time. Um, over the years um, that they were here, we also, she was one of the instrumental parents in wanting to form a parent group as, as well. 
I hadn't heard about the center. But somebody, thank goodness, within my circle or my family, knew something about the center, enough to um, get Madison there, which in turn got me there with other parents that have lost children. I, I would still, sh I still shop for Brayton on his birthday. You know, I will still shop at Christmas time. And uh, I would say the biggest thing that Season Center gave me was a place to go, to be around other people like me. There was, there was nowhere. I still haven't found anywhere else to go, where I can walk into a room and be with moms and dads that uh, are like me. We can sit in silence and be perfectly fine. We can chat and be fine. Where the wrong things just never said. No, we can I love you, buddy. And I've missed you. Our buddy program are, is uh, two children to one volunteer. Uh, the, the volunteers are not assigned to a child. It's free flow, um, uh, what we call free flow, in that they're, you know, sometimes they may be with a child in the volcano room, another time they could be reading a book with a child, on, a different child on the floor. It's, it's uh, the children's, um, the children gravitate to the volunteers. If you could see the difference of, uh, that, that Season Center makes uh, with some of the kids when they first walk in the door for the first time, how reserved, how uh, low-key and everything they are, and to see them when they're leaving, well, as you can hear them upstairs, they're just, man, they're just being kids again. Hi, Ella. Hi. How are you? I'm Amanda Fowler. I'm 20 years old. My mom, Leanne, passed away when I was 12 years old. After going through as a child, a grieving child through the center, I thought the development that I uh, went through regarding dealing with my own emotions, I felt that I had something to offer to children who were going through the same thing. So I thought becoming a buddy would be a very good option. I haven't seen this in a long time. No. She used to come in and do the group and be a facilitator and then turn around <laughs> half an hour later and be a teen. And it was wonderful to watch and wonderful to see her grow. There she was going for her last chemo treatment. Mm -hmm. And so we all got together and got a limousine to take her down to the Princess Margaret. Leanne died in April and um, Amanda went to live with her aunt for the summer in the, at a golf course. And she decided that the hospital needed some money for their RVH cancer care. And so she and her aunt decided that they would run a golf, court, a golf tournament for her, in her mom's name. And she had multitudes of people there. And uh, it was very, very successful, so successful that they asked her to do it, the hospital asked her to do it again the next year. So she went from April till August at the time of the golf tournament asking people, going over the same story about her mother dying and asking people for sponsorship and prizes and everything else. And it was, it, it must have been really tough for her and she was so strong. My choice to become a nurse was very much guided by uh, the experiences that I had with my mom, uh, with her health and with her death. Uh, the Season Center really opened up my eyes to the possibilities of helping other people and being helped. Um, nursing isn't necessarily just helping others, it's allowing others to help you as well. So it's, it's a very um, relatable career choice considering my experiences as a kid. If my mom was in front of me right now, I don't know what I'd have to say. I think I'd just let it stay silent. Um, I've grown a lot since my mom passed away, and uh, a lot of it is for her. And so there, there's a lot of what I've done that just speaks for itself, I guess. I'm, I'm terrifically proud of her. Yeah. She's made a good, a good stock. <laughs> the rock ceremony is 
the symbolic ceremony that we do um, when someone has decided that they're ready to leave the center. And so tonight will be Jonah's last night in group. The measure for success would be when uh, children feel like they're ready to leave. They feel like they don't need to or want to talk about um, their, loved one, their loved one anymore uh, every day. And it's not that they don't want to think about them, it's they've gone through the uh, process and they want to go on and think about other things. The feelings wall is sometimes at the start of grieving center we have questions and when someone is stumped they can always look on the feeling wall to see if there's a word that really describes how they feel. And then one that I made up was crafting. It's when you're crying but you're laughing at the same time so something sad just happened but then something like someone makes you feel happy, so it's a weird sound when you do it, though. Going to the center, you see new parents that's fresh when they've lost a child, and you see the despair, and they don't see it getting any better. That was me, and I need to know that, I've, that, that I am moving forward. I, I'm, I'm doing it. Some days I don't think I am, but that's my reality check to say, I'm doing it. Seriously? Okay, that's just weird. Oh, that was Nails on the chalkboard. My fingers in there. That's really healing. Yeah, that doesn't feel right. My dad was here right now. I don't know what I'd really do. I'd just kind of say, um, I love you and buy me some real estate in heaven. Yeah, this, mine's the crazy one. I got our balloons tight. Hi, Hey. Okay, we're going to the corner. A lot of times when the kids come in, you can see the anguish um, in their eyes. And uh, when they leave, it's not there anymore. That's hope. The Season Center to me is Sam and Jess's legacy, but more importantly the Season Center is a void that has been filled in helping children in our community deal with grief. And that's truly what it means to me. One, two, three, go! Let him go. I believe I can fly. Ah. Oh, she is looking down on you And she says, have a little faith in all you do And look up to that special kind of light Like the river winds through the sands of time She lives on through eternity Oh, she is looking down on